like to take a minute and introduce Shane Albert Doan. He is the captain of the Arizona Coyotes hockey team. He is known to one and all in our valley and in our state as Captain Coyote. He, at age 15, left the blossoming metropolis of Halkirk, Canada, population 70, to play hockey in the junior league. At age 17, he, after two years in the junior league in hockey, he was drafted into the National Hockey League and has been a outstanding member of the same team for now 19 years, a remarkable. And when you see his face, you will be astounded <laughs> because he has been known, as some others of us have, have of being a little combative from time to time. <laughs> he met his beautiful wife, Andrea, and they have six, four children, the oldest being 16. And if there is anybody that I have seen that epitomizes competitive, competitiveness, talent, goodwill, a great citizen, a person who all of us admire enormously, and he is a credit not only to his family and his team, but we are so proud that he represents the state of Arizona in the National Hockey League. It's a great, great story from a town of 70 to a town of 7 million. Shane Doan. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Senator. That was very kind. Um, I didn't realize Larry was going to do such a great job, so now I'm a little bit nervous about uh, being up here. But um, th thank you so much for, for inviting me. I, I couldn't express enough of how much I've enjoyed the last couple of days. Um, I don't normally get to hang out with prime ministers and ambassadors and senators and people of such amazing influence in a you guys aren't really in a in a hockey dressing room too much usually i'm hanging out with 18 and 19 year old kids that uh, are not concerned with the things that you guys are talking about and i've enjoyed it so much so thank you for allowing me to be here for the, for a few days um, it's been and thank you to megan megan has done an incredible job of making me feel comfortable she is She has introduced my wife and I to people that, uh, again, I, I was ecstatic to meet and to get to meet them was, was, was quite, quite unbelievable. Um, as, as the Senator mentioned, I, I was born in a small town in, in Alberta, so that's about the only thing that I have in common with a bunch of people in here is that I'm a foreigner as well at times. So, um, And my wife was born in, in British Columbia, so we found a couple Canadians that are here and made sure we said hello to each other because uh, we tend to do that as Canadians. So, um, I was born there and uh, like I said, I, like he mentioned, he stole a couple things from me that I, I left home when I was 15 from a very, very small town and I grew up on a ranch um, that uh, helped kids that um, we, uh, we'd started as kind of a dude ranch for kids to come out and have an opportunity to learn to horsemanship and different things like that. And in my family, you're either a cowboy or a hockey player, and my joke has always been I just wasn't tough enough to be a cowboy, so I decided to, become, <laughs> to be a hockey player because they are, uh, the, the cowboys are a whole different breed. But um, I left home when I was 15 and, uh, and went to Kamloops to play hockey there and, and was fortunate enough to meet my wife. And, and uh, from there, I got drafted to a, a little town consider, compared to, to, to Phoenix in Winnipeg. And uh, as an organization, that was in 95. So I got drafted by the Winnipeg Jets. I played my first year right out as an 18-year-old. So as an 18-year-old in hockey, you're allowed to do that. And I was given the opportunity to do it, and I did it. And so some people will say that they're from ASU or their postgraduate education's from ASU or from NAU. Mine's from the NHL. So I didn't really get an opportunity to, to get that type of education other than from that. And, and most of my education, as we were talking with the senators, came from hockey. Most of my education has came from a dressing room 
which sometimes is really good to have an education in a dressing room, and other times there's some really wrong things that go on and can teach you some things that are very, um, not things that you talk about publicly, so you, you learn, you learn quickly kind of those things, and, and I did, and I learned a lot from, from being in a dressing room and having the opportunity to, to play there, and um, as the senator mentioned, this is, I just, this was 20 years ago I was drafted, and, and it's something that, is, uh, is I can't really believe it's happened so quickly and it's gone by so fast. I, um, I was just talking with my son who is, and he was talking about how it was when, when I played when I was younger. And I, uh, I didn't think it was that long ago until you start talking to the kids now and, and to realize how long ago it was. But um, I, I got to represent my, after I was drafted, I, I've, I've played for a while, and I got to represent my country in a few different situations, whether it's Olympics or at the World Cup or the World Championships, and stuff that hockey has taught me so much. It's taught me so much in so many areas, and one of the things that we talked about was leadership, and one of the things that he taught, that uh, it has taught me the work ethic, and it's taught me how to do things to to improve myself, because in a dressing room, we'll have all different kinds of, of nationalities, especially in our sport. We'll have people from Russia, we'll have people from the Czech, we'll have people from Finland, um, Slovakia, Slovenia. You have people from all over the world that come together and they speak all different languages. And they come from all different backgrounds. Not somebody from Moscow doesn't necessarily have the same appreciation from a small town kid from Alberta, and yet those those personalities have to mend together. And I think that that's, as I grew up in, in the locker room, I, I started to understand a lot of, of how different people worked and how things kind of went together. And in, in my sport, you, you get given a C, and it's called being the captain, and, and you have to wear it on your jersey. And it's, it's given to you by the coaches, and it's given to you by other, the, the players will sometimes vote, but mostly it's given to you by the organization to say, okay, this is our captain, this is a guy that is going to be our leader. And in 2003, I was, they gave me that honor. I got to be the captain of, of the Phoenix, we were the Phoenix Coyotes, now the Arizona Coyotes, but when, I remember when I was given that, I, w I, was, I was blown away because of the fact that I, I liked the history of my sport and I liked the people that had gone before me that had been the captains. and and the responsibility that it takes to be a leader and to make people feel united. And, and, I, and I was a little overwhelmed at it and I didn't understand how I was going to do it. And so I, I did my best to try to remember the people that I wanted to follow because realistically being a leader is just having others follow you. People, people want to kind of put a label on it or say it's this or that, but I think being a leader is a person that others want to follow. And so I tried to think about the people that I wanted to follow and people that I'd grown up following and being interested in. And obviously my dad was probably the first person that comes through my mind off the, right off the top. And his, his big thing was if you enjoy working hard, Shane, every day is going to be a holiday. So you got to work on that one. So, you know, that's one of the things that brought in the, the work ethic of, of if you want to be a leader, you're going to have to be able to be willing to work hard. You're going to have to be willing to do these types of things. Then there are some players that, that I, as I came into the league that were leaders and captains and, and people that were ahead of me that I'd seen in the way that they, they portrayed themselves. And, and one of the big things that I, I personally thought was so important was putting others first. And it sounds so contradictory in the, in the field of sport because now in professional sports, it seems that a lot of times it's all about I, it's all about me, what can I get, what can I do? But if you really wanted to be a leader and, of a team and in a dressing room, putting others first is, is really the most important thing because you have to be able to see a person walk into the room and understand that he's uncomfortable. <laughs> he doesn't speak the language. He doesn't know the coach. He's never been to the city. He doesn't know how to get around in a city. He doesn't understand all the nuances that go on in your dressing room. Because in a dressing room, there is all, so many little things where this guy, you know, he gets dressed at this time and has a skate over here and his stick's hanging on the wall. And if you mess that up, he's going to fight you over it. And that's just the way it is. So you better be, you better be able to figure things out in a hurry. And so as a leader, you have to be able to see people that come into your room that that need you to put them first, to go to them. And you, you, it's, it's not putting them first as much as it's putting the team first, but it's, it's putting them first to give them the best opportunity 
for them personally to be successful so that in the long run, you have an opportunity to win as a team. And it's stuff that I figured out. I, and to be respecting the authority that is given to you. I, there's a, when I was 18, I was, I was drafted high and I was fairly confident. I'd won a national title and I'd been MVP of the national title and it was a big thing and you're feeling a little bit maybe bigger than your britches. And so I was, I, I, coach was kind of giving it to me in practice one day and uh, as he's giving it to me, I kind of turned and as, I, as he skated away and he'd yelled at me and coaches can really yell and so he was doing a good job of that. And I, I kind of rolled my eyes and kind of looked away like, really? Like, it wasn't that big of a deal. And we had a guy on the team, his name was Dave Manson and we actually called him Charlie and there was a good reason. He was full on as crazy as a man as I'd ever been around and he'd been hit in the throat when he was like 20, 21. So, when he talked, you could barely hear him, and so you really had to listen in carefully. And he had this really, really, really hoarse voice. And he liked me. This, he was key, because I needed him to like me because of who he was. And, and he grabbed me by my, the scruff of my, my jersey and kind of threw me up against the glass. And in his voice, where he's like, hey, Shane, don't you ever do that again. And that gets your attention, like that. And I was, <laughs> I was like, holy cow, OK? This is a guy that is known to be crazy and he, his point was, don't you ever disrespect a coach like that again. He was pointing out to me that you have to understand that in order for us to be successful, we all have to be on the same page. And if you think right now at 18, you're gonna disrespect my coach, then you're not on the same page as me. And it was a lesson that I picked up and I learned. And since then, I, I don't have the ability to talk like that. I sometimes fake it when I grab a young guy, I'll be like, but no, I don't. But it's one of those things that, it, it, it stuck with me and, and it was something that I, I remember very well that as, as I've been growing up that the respect that authority and, and the dressing room and the NHL has taught me that. And there's all kinds of little things that, it, that the league and the, that hockey's taught me and things that you think that you understand and things that you, you're like, okay, now I got a little bit better understanding of, of, of how to be a leader and how to do this. And then this year happened where this year as a team, I've never been in a more embarrassing year in my profession. I, I mean, it's just, it's just a game and, it's, and I understand that, but it's embarrassing to go out there and to lose the way that we lost this year. And I, and I at the, kind of going through the year, I've been trying to think about, well, what did I learn? What did, you know, you always want to try to get better and every year trying to understand. And I was trying to figure out what I learned from this year and, and I think I got a, it taught me this year that there's absolutely nothing, there's no way that you can say, well, this is what you have to be like to be a leader. If you want to be a leader, you have to be X or Y, um, because there is no fundamental that if you do X, Y, and Z, you are going to be a leader. It really comes down to being, being genuine and being who you are and the day-to-day -day things that you believe in and that you have principles in, when you do them on a day-to-day -day basis will get you through the times when things don't go even close to the way you expected them and you still have to lead. And that's one of the things that uh, is, is, is probably the hardest thing to learn and I'm sure that you know next year I'll probably figure out that I didn't learn that the right way and I gotta learn it again because that's the way things are. But um, when I was asked to do this, it, it was something that I was, I was really excited about and, it, it, and I really appreciate the opportunity to just as a, as a hockey player to stand up here and to listen to you folks. I w I've, been, I've been absolutely amazed and loved every minute of it, so thank you so much.